Hey everybody. Well, this is a quick update to the tobacco plants and a little informative video about tobacco budworm and harvesting and drying. As you can see, the tops of these tobacco plants I allowed to seed. Some of them I clipped off, but many of them I left. And they form these seed pods, which are, let's just say each one of those seed pods probably has several hundred seeds in it, at least a couple hundred. And there are <laughs> a thousand, a couple thousand of them. Um, generally, you harvest the seed pods off if you want the leaves to grow bigger, right? Because it's putting more energy into buds. So I clipped a lot of them, like over here, but I also left quite a few because I wanted to sell some of my seeds and give some away to people. And uh, while I was harvesting, I, I, I noticed, well, if you look here, down here on these leaves, it might be more difficult to see because I'm out in the sun. But I'll show you over here. So right here I have my tobacco that I've been growing. As you've seen it hung before, I had these uh, lines of tobacco, which were, I string them out like this at first. And once they're somewhat dry, at least to this point, I sun dry them to that point. And then they have kind of a, a soft feel to them. They're not completely dry yet. They're still malleable. And at that point I group them up and uh, these ones are sun-dried, whereas I have some that are uh, carefully dried in the dark in the back, and I have them in a box. But sometimes I'll just dump these in a box afterwards to let them finish curing and drying. And uh, <clears throat> they have a really, a really wonderful smell. I mean, I, I love the smell of tobacco. So over here, what we have is this is the cream of the crop, or the primo, the very top leaves off of the plants and they contain the most oils and the most nicotine and everything else and they're very potent and this isn't regular tobacco by the way this is uh, Aztec tobacco or uh, well let's just say it's ten times stronger than standard tobacco so it's not meant to be rolled in cigarettes um, it's the stuff they make mapacho out of and snuffs and various stronger compounds but uh, this is a very strong uh, a very strong leaf compared to the rest of the plant, so I'm kind of a little reluctant to even to even try these, but I have some dried out, and they dry out really malleable and oily. And I also wanted to show you this. Now, I think this is the one. Maybe it's this one over here. There we go. Now, this is the budworm. Now, when you're growing... I'll just focus already. You can see him right here above my finger. It's just a little worm. He's crawling along the stem there. And he will chew into that bud and make a hole like the one you see up here. And uh, these holes will start dropping seeds out of them. It'll be either round or oblong. And that's how you know you have budworms. You'll see the seeds all over the stem, all over the pods, and falling down on your leaves, which can be a pain in the butt when you're harvesting leaves because you don't want seeds left behind. Um, those budworms are also found in, I believe, begonias and petunias and marigolds. And they love to destroy flowers. Generally, there's so many seeds available, it's not a big issue, but um, having them on there is kind of messy because it gets seeds all over the leaves. So you have to clean every little seed off before you dry it, or else you're going to end up with a, a popping and crackling tobacco, and that's something you don't want. Anyhow, I just thought I would share some of those, uh, some of those things and uh, my little budworm realization. I hadn't shared that before, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in there to dry with the rest of them. The one I showed before, I have a huge box full that's that's slowly drying. So uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet. I'm just just enjoying growing because growing plants is something that's a passion of mine, and. Uh, Nature is always worth embracing, even if I'm not a smoker anymore. <laughs> Take care, my friends. Thanks for listening.
the tobacco for some time and uh, trying a few different methods. These are the bunches that I hung outside and at least these two were in the sunlight. They were dried in the direct sunlight close to each other strung up on the strings like I showed you but then when they were still a little bit moist I pulled them off and I just tied them up. Now I use this trimmer line for hanging them because it's rigid hard plastic you can just cut a point and string them up just like a needle and thread. And so these three piles are uh, sun dried to an extent. Now here's an interesting thing is that right down here this is what happens when you dry them without using or without picking the leaves rather. So the interesting thing about this is these are ones that I hung outside. I had a couple hung outside and a couple hung indoors not in direct sunlight and I noticed that the leaves turn a dark brown when it's dried right on the stem and I found that interesting because that happened in only about a week whereas these have been here for several weeks and uh, this one is almost drying faster. It's an interesting concept and I think it might have to do with the fact that when these are hung on the, st on the stalk even though the stalk is adding moisture to the leaf the leaves are further spread out from each other and they're able to dry more independently um, but I have more experimenting to do on that and this is what the tobacco looks like when it's when it's dried on the plant and then set aside to cure for a while so this is um, this is a few months old. It has quite a ways to go before it's, you know, uh, I guess the idea is that you want to get the ammonias out. And a lot of people have concerns about their their leaves remaining green. And uh, that's what you'll notice up here. A couple of these are still a little bit green. Now you get the ammonia out by uh, uh, from a few different ways. And one of the interesting things that I've found is that people do what they call pylons. And I'm going to show you a little bit about that over here. Now, pylons are otherwise known as stacking. And a lot of folks will say you can't do that for the home consumer because basically what you're doing is you're taking tobacco that's uh, somewhat dried and then you're stacking them in bales and then peeling the bales apart when they reach about 130 degrees. So you're fermenting the tobacco. And uh, what I found is by I piled these up soaking wet and this is an experiment I wanted to see what would happen and um, you'll notice that they have a, a dark color they almost look moldy but there's no it's not mold and um, God, they have a very very sweet smell when stacked like that now I'm carefully monitoring them and I'll turn the piles every so often um, but these are just a few of the ones I, I wanted to make as an example here and uh, every so often I'll peel the pile back and I'll actually blot the uh, moisture off of them. And like I said, this is fully experimental, but that smells very much like chewing tobacco from what I'm familiar with. Um, so I'm, I'm curious to see how these will turn out in these different types, different ways. Now I showed you previously those small leaves that I was drying on the racks. And after those are uh, semi-dry. I put them in these, this little basket and uh, I let them dry out to where they're still somewhat pliable. The thing is you don't want to get them bone dry to the point where they're just crackling and uh, it'll take time to cure them. Uh, this right here is just obviously a big tobacco leaf I just harvested the other day. So this is um, one of the last remaining seed pods with the flowers on it and then this is what those seed pods end up looking like at the very end. And as you see right here, I have a bag of seeds. There's probably this little thing right here probably has 10,000 seeds or more in it. These seeds are so tiny. And uh, so I carefully harvested these from my seed pods. And like I said, a lot of people clip their seed pods because it'll put more uh, growth into the leaves and it'll put more energy into plant growth. But uh, I very much enjoy having seeds for the future. So I have a few more hanging and I dry them in paper bags, but uh, I'm probably going to do an update to this in about, a, you know, six months to a year once I have these all cured out and I find out what the best methods are so I can share them with you all. So thanks for coming along and I uh, hope you learned something. One of the last, uh, one of the simplest methods I have here is drying them in a grocery bag. <laughs> 
some of the just average leaves. I just put them in a bag, rotate it every so often. So I'm curious to see how this is going to turn out. And um, like I said, this is Nicotiana rustica, which is not your standard tobacco. It's not Virginia tobacco. This stuff is, instead of 1% to 3% nicotine, it can be up to 9%, sometimes as high as 20 times higher than standard tobacco potency. So it's not something to be trifled with. <laughs> Take care, everyone, and uh, be well.